everybody. Thanks for joining me here at Old Wendell Racing. We are back in the garage again. We have Hubert here, all front and center. Simon is downstairs starting his long winter nap. So that means we're going to spend more time with Hubert here for the next few months and we're going to be working on this engine here. Uh, I think where we left off is we kind of got a rough idea what the deck height was going to be. But now we're going to uh, figure out a good solid deck height. Um, I do have us uh, cylinder shims here. I did order some and I'll show them to you. These are all empty street and off-road uh, parts. And I am noticing I haven't taken them out of the package yet, but they look like they are made out of stainless steel. And just kind of by feeling the package, or at least this set is stainless steel. <laughs> these are uh, black, but I'm not feeling any ridges on these. So I think these are kind of an upgrade from the old uh, bug pack products. I gotta kind of go back through my notes here and see where we left off and see what shims I'm gonna need. It looks like I got a set of um, a set of 60s, a set of 10s, and a set of 40s. Now the reason I need a good uh, a deck height reading here, a good solid one, is I'm about ready to order the heads for uh, Hubert's uh, power plant here, and I'm really looking at the uh, CB Performance uh, Super Pros. Don't confuse those with the Super Flows. They are uh, based on a uh, Type 1 um, head and not the uh, racing heads that the Super Flows are. Uh, maybe I'll show those to you guys in a future video when I do get them in. I need to know where to have the uh, CCs in the combustion chamber set. And I can't get that um, information until I get the information on the old deck height here. So yeah, let's, uh, get, <laughs> let's let me get back <laughs> into my notes here, see where I left off. So if I only have to open up two of those uh, packages, uh, that's all we're going to open up. And then we'll put the other ones on the shelf for a future build. Uh, 94s. I don't have any plans for 94s. I am going to be working on a 90 and a half year engine relatively soon too. Kind of a, I like to call it a sweep the floor thing, but uh, it's just kind of parts I've had lying around and it's either going to be a spare engine or something I may sell. So yeah, stay tuned for that too. Well, after doing a little uh, research here, it looks like I didn't use any shims when I did my deck height and I'm roughly around 5,000. So I wanted to shoot for about a 40,000 stack height. So I think if I just put the, uh, try putting the 40s underneath here and uh, shoot for around 45,000. It looks like the heads come advertised with a 67cc combustion chamber. So I'm gonna have to have um, those machined down a little bit and shoot for, I don't know, 55 to 57 cc's, giving us roughly nine to one compression. You know, we'll be in that area, that ballpark. And then we'll have to see how it runs. Uh, this will be an EFI engine, and we're probably gonna put a flex fuel sensor on there. So if I decide I wanna shoot for a little more compression, more like 10 to one, I, I may do that. You know, because with the ethanol, you can kind of get away with that. That's kind of a base compression that they like to start out with when they start running a full E85. But like I said, this car will be flex fuel, so it's not gonna always see E85. It should run really good at 10 to 1 compression, but I think we're going to start out at 9 to 1. That's what I'm going to shoot for. So, yeah, it's time to quit yapping and start wrenching. So I got a cylinder number one up, so I'm going to start out with that one first. And if you guys remember here, I notch all my cylinders. And this is number one, so there's only one notch in there. So I know that this is cylinder number one. And the piston should be stamped with a number one on it too, making sure it's mated with its proper cylinder sleeve. So, <laughs> before I stick the cylinders on, let's open this package up. These are 40s for 94 millimeter cylinders. And these were an eBay purchase. I do like to try to buy the majority of my stuff locally if I can. But since Emily's paying for these things, uh, sometimes it's easier for her just to, you know, purchase them on eBay and have them shipped here. Now that I do have these open, I do feel a little bit of a ridge in here. It's not horrible, but I think I am gonna grab a file and file these down a little bit. So that means we gotta go over to the, the vise over there because I like to lock the, the file in the vise and uh, grind them that way. So hold on here. All right, I just usually lock it in the vise so it's higher than the jaw. These aren't horrible, so it shouldn't take that long. I'll just kind of just run them lightly across the file here until I feel they're smooth. I did have someone, one of your subscribers, leave a comment 
How about stones? I guess machinists like to stone everything. I guess that'd be like honing your knife. <laughs> hey, you use a stone. I don't have any, but trust me, that's something I am going to look into. At least for the finer things. That was one of my cam installation videos. When you're dealing with bearings, it's probably better to use something a little finer. And you can see it kind of working there. Where the high spots are. Go around one more time. But yeah, this is the idea. And like I said, I, I'm a garage mechanic. So I worked with the tools I have. So I hope most of you guys can relate. But I'm sure you don't want to sit here and watch me file all four of these. So I won't worry with that. Hello everybody, it is <laughs> fall. I said, put Simon away. And uh, you see the trees are beautiful colors, but you have to bear with me. My neighbor's uh, taking care of his yard, which I probably should be doing. And he's blowing leaves. Yeah, hopefully noise isn't too bad. Uh, gonna have to bear with it. But yeah, I got uh, the cylinder shims all uh, honed up now, and uh, I'm gonna install one here on the engine case and put cylinder one on. Well, one thing I do want to point out is I'll show you. Last time I had trouble, my readings were kind of a little off, but I always used to just kind of zero my. I like gauge out on the flat spot on here, but you know, paint's you know, coming off and stuff, and it's, it's kind of hard to get a good zero setting. So I decided to use this piece of aluminum here. It's nice and flat, and pretty much get a good zero reading every time now. now these shims go on two ways. <laughs> you gotta find which way that is. And hopefully, I'm not gonna have a well, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they only go on one way. Wouldn't be the first time I was wrong. There we go. Hopefully they don't have too much of a problem. It looks like they are dented or indented nicely. I'm running 10 millimeter studs on this case and sometimes they get in the way of things. Especially when you're trying to put bigger things in. thing I don't have is my flywheel on, so I need the steering wheel. <laughs> That's right, I said steering wheel. And as I haven't seen this yet, I basically just mounted a steering wheel to a pulley, aluminum pulley, crank pulley. And I can roll engines and stuff around with it. There we go. Rotate it up. I've already done this once before. Doesn't hurt to double check, make sure we're not hitting on anything. Alright, now to mount this bad boy. I'm going to tilt the engine here so it's a little easier for you guys to see. Maybe I'll move it over here a little bit just so I'm in camera range over there too. They win. That's probably good. And now I need a like a 15 millimeter wrencher. Of course, I'm not prepared. Trying a new camera mount thing here too for the GoPro, and I don't know if I'm 100% liking it. You know, the guys, you know, click any clack or comment down below and let me know if you like it. I gotta get a wrench. Hold on. And of course, those are 17 mil. Okay. Double check to make sure the cylinder is seated. Oh yeah. Looks like it's right on top of the shim where it's supposed to be. Now, watch this go up and down. That's 
10, 20, 30, 45 thousandths. Yeah, we'll call that 45 thousandths. Probably get a set of feeler gauges just, just to double check. We do need to jot this down. Put this one number one setting, and then we're over here to number two. Put some number one, zero, four, five. Very good. All right, just to double check with math. They don't math well. The 19,000 fueler gauge and a 26,000 fueler gauge is 45. Okay. And nicely. It's in there good. So now we gotta check cylinder number two since we're on this side. Then we'll keep it over and do it all over again. So let me get it all set up. Cylinder number two is mounted. Tilt it a little more. It's here for you guys to see and. Now let's see where it wind up, and if it's like the other one, it's probably going to wind up around roughly 47 thousandths. Why is it so far off? 51, that's, that's quite a ways. I think I'm going to... Uh, Check the gauge again and move a shim around and see what happens. Okay, we're back. We popped out uh, shims. Uh, reset. It wasn't that far off. Maybe a half a thousandth. We set the gauge. And remounted everything. And I don't know, let's see if it makes a difference or not. Hmm. Still at 50. What did I have before? That's 2,000 off. Four, not five. I think what I'm gonna do one more time. Is uh, I'm gonna go back to the file and um, run it across the file a little bit more. See if there's a still a ridge on this one. Now we'll point out once I find a cylinder that I like, um, the shim stays with the cylinder. You know, I don't think there's that much of a lip on there, but I don't know. We'll find out. Alright, one more time. Switch out the shim again. We'll see. See how well all these shims are. Get these things on so I can actually read stuff. That's <laughs> back to 51. That must <laughs> that was probably the, <laughs> the shim I started out with. <laughs> oh. Alright guys, I'm dumb. How come you didn't catch this for me? I'll show you what I'm doing here. That's a cylinder one, cylinder two, but I've got one, two, and three. I'm actually trying to mock this up with cylinder three. So let's put the proper cylinder in the cylinder two hole and see if that makes any of a difference. Smart. All right, we're back at it. We have cylinder number two, one, two, and cylinder number two spot. Yep, I can be a moron sometimes. And let's see if it makes any of a difference. And that's closer to where it was before, which would be 47. Which would make sense. 40,000 shim. Looks like I had 7,000 before. So I can't I won't cry about that. I'm not liking, I'm hoping it'll change, so we won't know. Number three, that's really tight. That's the, you know, people say that's the cylinder that likes to run the hottest. Our uh, pattern is going the same, that's going to be 41, but we'll, we'll see. I don't know how good the uh, dial indicator was working earlier. Because I was setting over there on the uh, the painted steel instead of the aluminum steel but every time I'm done I put it right back on here and it's, so far it's been spot on the money. Just for fun let's do another full revolution on this.
and uh, we'll move on to the other side of the engine. Okay, <laughs> we've got number three <laughs> in number three spot. <laughs> That's always a bonus. I'll uh, tilt this. There we go. That's probably good. And hope that we get reading we're expecting. Oh, it's really tight. I got a 10,000 shim. I could make that a 48, which I'd be more comfortable with. But uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold off uh, calling this one good. I'm gonna measure the other one there. I'm figuring we're gonna get 45 on that. Gotta hate to put um, one 10,000 shim underneath one cylinder. I'm gonna have to put a straight edge across it too and see possible you know the machine work at this one just got kissed a little bit more we have cylinder number four mounted and left cylinder number three in there and just to double check it's one two three and four that is number four now i got four locked down but three isn't and what i'm going to do after well the best the best case scenario is that this one reads roughly around 38 to 40 thousandths too then i'll feel comfortable actually putting you know ten thousand shims under each one but i left them in there because I want to put a straight edge across and see if you know if I could see by eye that maybe one is ten thousandths lower than the other or five thousandths lower than the other who knows let's take a look here a little watcher I don't know why I'm holding that one down it's locked oops too fast so that's 10 20 30 10 20 30, so this is 42. 42. But yeah, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna throw a shim underneath this. I don't know. Actually, it's 43. I like that. I like 43. It's over 40, but but under uh, under 50. So 10, 20, 30. See, I'm not counting right. It's 10, 20, 30, 3 thousandths. Okay, I gotta clarify. Um, stop the video here while I'm editing it, because I made a big mistake in. I don't know why I was having such a big brain fart, but I have to show you guys before the video goes out much longer what I got going on here. For some reason, I keep thinking apparently that this is zero when zero is actually over here. Because when you go to zero, these dials out, they move around. But, you know, we were at 10, 20, 30, 40, 3 thousandths here on this one. I'm good. And yeah, you'll see when the video goes on that I finally come to the uh, conclusion that I was having a brain fart. <laughs> it happens to the best of us. So yeah, let's continue on. 33, yeah. That's <laughs> how I get myself into trouble. <laughs> we got one at 38, one at 33. So I'm gonna throw 10,000 shims underneath here and, and hope for the best. And hope that they're, you know, 10,000. Sometimes they're a little over, maybe a little under. Uh, but yeah, let me get those opened up and smoothed out and we'll start this project all over again on this side. Not with this machinist, but I used to have a machinist before. Oh, you'd always be 10,000 different from side to side. He says it was impossible, but I'm measuring it. And that's why you always double or triple check your measurements just to make sure that, you know, you don't pull a Clinton and misread things. Okay, 10,000 shim and 40,000 shim underneath here, cylinder number three. And we're all mounted up, ready to start rolling her over. Cross our fingers and hope we're somewhere in the 40,000s range. Not the 50,000s range, just what I was afraid of. Now why? Why? I don't know what's going on here, guys. I remounted it, and now I have 48,000s. I don't know, I'm gonna have to go back and review the footage. Maybe I was misreading it, but I took the 10,000 shim out, and everything's good now. I don't know. Makes me wanna go back and check the other sides too, just 
just to be safe. I mean, yeah, 47 and a half, 48. That's what I'm going to call it. I'm happy with that. That's kind of where we want to be at. Now to mount number four, and I'll do the same thing. I'm going to, well, I haven't checked it with the shim yet. So I'm going to, I'm going to go and check it with the 10,000 shim and then check it without and see where we're at. I don't know. I'm in a draw right now. About ready to pull my hair out. This is why you measure and measure and measure and measure. Okay, both shims are mounted underneath here and we're about to see what happens. Yeah, see now it's reading 54, which would be 20 thousandths more than we were at before. So we're gonna Pull that shim out there, and maybe I was just being screwy. I said I got to review the footage and see where we're at, but yep, like I keep saying, this is why we measure and measure and measure. Oh, Bikini, time to see where we're at. Okay, I like that. That's. 43 thousandths. I can live with that. Not 33. Must have just been misreadings crap. Alright, where's my calculator? Do I have a calculator? I know I got one on this thing. Let's see if I remember anything from math here. Add them up or maybe multiply them. Three equal, now we'll divide by four. If I did that math right, we've got a, oh, what do they call that? Um, I will call that a meridian. I'm trying to remember my algebra or, or calculator, calculating class, <laughs> calculus class, I remember which is what. But um, we have a basically um, an even amount, um, about 45 thousandths, almost 46 thousandths, no, 45.75 thousandths of an inch. So I'm going to basically do my math on the 45 thousandths for my compression ratio. And basically on the compression ratio, I basically just use CV Performance's calculator. If you just go into Google and Google CV Performance calculator, um, the compression and deck height calculator will pop up for you. And it's real simple because it's already set up for uh, millimeters, you know, your deck height, and then it's already, because we're working on four cylinders, I think it's already set for four cylinder. And yeah, you just type your numbers in there and, and hit calculate compression, and it'll give you a compression rating. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to do that and I kind of run through with uh, what I came up with on uh, the pad over here. And I think I'm going to go back to the other sides and just measure them since I've got everything here all set up and everything's out. It doesn't take that long. I'm going to do it off camera just to make sure that, you know, I was reading the dial indicator properly. So yeah, stay tuned. I'll be right back. Okay, I remeasured this side, right where the previous numbers were at, so that's that's good. And so the next thing to do is just kind of type all these numbers into the calculator and uh, see what we come up with. So here, let's head over here. All right, so this is a pretty simple calculator, and, and with numbers, uh, like I said, this is on CB's performance website. And the numbers they ask for is the engine bore, which we got written down here. We we'll type in 94, the stroke, 76. That's why I write this stuff down, because I'll forget, number 76. Now deck height, this is where it kind of gets confusing because you've got to put your decimal point in there. And we did a, an average. Nope, next one went down. I'm going to go 0, 4, 5. That's what we came up with an average. Combustion chamber CC. Now I said that these heads basically come from the factory at 67 cc. That's what was on um, their website. And compression is four cylinders. It actually gives you your cubic inch and stuff, which I'm gonna write cubic inch down because I haven't got that down yet. Oh yeah, I do right here, 29, 129. And number of cylinders it was already in there at four. So I am gonna have to have them make those a little smaller. If you wanna, like I said, bring the compression up. And they said on their website they can go down by 20 for a fee, of course, which would down actually what is it 67 no i put out 10 cc 
at 57, and that gives us 9.1. I kind of like that. So we're going to put that over here. 9.1 compression ratio. So yeah, they got to be a, a good start for Emily. Won't be, uh, it shouldn't be too much. And hopefully it's enough to put a smile on her face. If you guys have already seen the last video, she's gone down the racetrack in her golf uh, all-track wagon. And yeah, that's got her excited. She definitely wants to go down the track here in Hubert sometime. Hopefully it won't be too much longer. I hope they get a, a quite a bit done this winter, but I say that every year. I think the anticipation for this car is going to be, um, I, I'd be happy if it ran 14 seconds in the quarter mile, but um, I'm hoping it'll run a little little better than that. I know Emily's just starting and we don't want to make it an 11 second car yet, but it'd be nice to see it in the low 13s, maybe the high 12s. You know, I'm going to kind of take what I've learned with my car and apply it to this car and, and hope we can get there. So let's keep our fingers crossed. Keep shifting those gears, keep cruising, and always enjoy the ride. Let's get out of here.